Spoiler alert. Italian food and gluten-free diets haven't always gone hand in hand until now. We locked Ben in a cupboard with nothing but gluten-free ingredients and Kenwood appliances to solve that. Seven months later, and this is our gluten-free pear and parma ham gnocchi. You look pale. Okay, so the great thing about Italian food is that it's a delicious and moreish, but it doesn't have a lot of gluten in it. Pizza, pasta, mm -hmm. even gnocchi potato dumplings. We're going to do the potato dumplings, but sub out the flour for non-gluten flours. Yes. But it does need to start with mashed potato, and we're going to make the driest mashed potato we can by roasting these in their skins rather than boiling them. So if you want to do that, just prick all the potatoes, salt them, pepper them and oil them, and we're going to roast them about 190 degrees Celsius for about an hour until basically you can put a knife in and it glides right the way through to the middle so they're cooked all the way through. And we've chosen quite a dry, floury, mealy potato like a russet because that will give us the best, fluffiest mash. Right, get your mitts all around those. After some time in your oven, they will come out looking a little bit like this and you want to wait till they cool to a point where you can handle them. In that time, you can make the main flavour that's going to encompass all of our beautiful beautiful gnocchi, and that is a herb oil. All the bits of the herbs you wouldn't normally use still have so much flavour. Make sure they're washed so there's no soil or grit or dirt, and then we're going to place them into a spice grinder with oil, salt and pepper. Blend it up, and what you're left with is a vibrant green flavoursome oil. Now this is a combination of parsley stalks, mint stalks, and I think there's a whole stalk of tarragon in there as well. So beautiful flavours, heavily seasoned, and with a little bit of oil. What it does do is put so much power into getting a very, very, very fine mixture so that your oil is super green. And this beautiful green sludge smells incredible. Minty, parsley, the tarragon gives it a slight aniseed, That's salt, good. pepper and oil. Teamwork on the spuds, we're going to cut them in half and then just scoop out the potato flesh, leaving you with skins and that's why we season the potatoes because we're not actually using the seasoned bit but these make great leftover snacks with potato skins sprinkle of cheese right. little herbs some chili oil into a hot oven they crisp up a treat the bit we want is this because this is mashed potato that's dry and it hasn't been boiled in water and all of your mashed potato goes into our mixer and we've got the k-beater attachment and what that's going to do is beat ourselves a nice fluffy mash now we can clamp it down and start to mix it on a nice gentle speed. You want to overwork it because it will make the potatoes kind of gloopy. So just nice and slow, it will break it up. It won't give you a perfectly smooth mashed potato. But like I said, this is kind of rustic. Do we want to season this now? Yes, we have seasoned the outside of our potatoes, which we've then got rid of. I read so the recipe. We should season the inside. A little bit of salt. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> a little bit of pepper. Right, this bit. I'm rather interested in because you've got three flours there, none of them glutinous, but one of them's got gluten in the title. Yes, so we have rice flour, yeah. made from rice in the same way wheat flour is. We've got glutinous rice flour. Which has no gluten it's, in it. It's, it's, it's glutinous in terms of the Property. adjective, yep. not the noun. There is no gluten in it, but it is stretchy like okay. gluten. And sorghum flour, which was a completely new flour yeah, to me never until quite it. recently. It's a, it's a grain, um, it's originally from like Australia. It's really, really wholesome. And again, it has great properties for baking if you're trying to avoid gluten. There you go. So we've got an equal combination of all three and they're gonna go into this with two whole eggs and then beat it until it has just come together into one dough. As soon as it's all together, stop. And you can see how sticky it started when the eggs go in, and this is why the mixer makes life a lot easier, because it's less messy. Now this mixture now needs rolling out into sausages on a floured surface. I suggest you use one of your gluten-free flours. Sorghum is particularly good for it. Now what we want to do is cut it into small pieces. So just pieces, as long as they are thick. And then just with the back of a fork, give them a bit of a squidge, and what you end up with is that more familiar shape, it squashes them out a little bit, it makes them cook more evenly, and later on it gives divots for the oil to go into so it all is, is that, delicious. That's why they do it? Well, it helps sauce to coat. I think that's why okay, a lot of pasta yeah. is ribbed. Kapow, kapow, kapow.
to cook our gnocchi, rapidly boiling water that we're going to heavily season. And then all they need is a couple of minutes until they literally float in the water. In that time, while they're cooking and floating, we can wipe down our board and dice a pair. They are floating. Once they're floating, they're pretty much there. You can test one if you like, but generally two or three minutes is good. Then drain them of most of their liquid. I just like to put them on a little bit of kitchen roll, mm -hmm. just to take the sog out of them. And that's the singular of soggy. And at this stage, you've got a couple of options. Once they've drained a bit on kitchen paper, place them into a bowl, toss through the herb oil, plate them up with a diced pear and the parma ham. Alternatively, you can go the extra mile, and in a really hot pan, you can quickly fry them off and just get a little bit okay. of a golden colour. To do that, you could use butter. Mm -hmm. Up until this point, this whole dish has also been dairy-free, so that's up to you. Or you could just use some of that herb oil. The bit that you cook will lose some of its colour, so the some you can leave back for plating. But in a nice hot pan, oh, wow. you can just place some of our gnocchi in and get a nice fry. You can even warm some of the pear through. I'm happy with that. You can serve a portion up. And then these gorgeous strips of wafer thin, almost translucent parma ham, just around there. And there it is, a super simple, but actually gluten-free gnocchi. What about your fanny? Oh, pear fan. And there you go, a perfectly gluten-free gnocchi. <laughs> Sorted. Potato dumplings of herby deliciousness. Dig in. Right, let's get this. Let's give these a go. They're very, very good. So they've still got that slight bounce, which is what the glutinous flour gives it. Flavour-wise, absolutely bang on. It tastes so good. And with the cured ham and the sweetness of pear. Absolutely delicious. It's very simple, once you've got the three flowers, they'll keep in your store cupboard forever and ever until you need to use them. So go get yourself a bag and then try the recipe. The full details available down below. Mm -hmm.